Hey what's going on guys, Chris here and welcome to another Battlefield 1 Weapon Guide. In this video we're going to be checking out the Mauser C96 for the Medic class, a legendary German pistol which we can see being wielded by the guy on the game's cover art. So the Mauser Construction 96 was constructed for one sole purpose, to kill. It's often called the Broom Handle Mauser down to its grip looking like a broom handle and it's also considered to be one of the most iconic semi-automatic pistols in the game. The C96 was originally chambered for the 7.63 by 25mm Mauser cartridge, a rimless bottleneck round first designed in the year of 1896 specifically for the pistol, which was also first produced in the very same year. This high velocity cartridge was the quickest commercially produced pistol round for 39 years running, up until the .357 Magnum cartridge was created in 1935. And along with the pistol's long barrel length, these factors offered increased material penetration and superior range over a lot of the other handguns around at the time. Featuring a rectangular fixed internal magazine just in front of the trigger not only gives the weapon a very distinctive look, but it also allows it to hold up to 10 rounds at a time via stripper clips, enabling troops up on the front lines an effective way to quickly replenish a sizeable chunk of lost ammo all in one go. Several other variants were also created soon after, giving the gun either a 6 or 20 round ammo capacity, though the 10 shot versions became standard and much more popular. The gun's inverted V front sight along with its V notch rear tangent sight offers a clear view of the enemy ahead and can also be adjusted for engaging targets by up to a thousand meters, which is a bit excessive for a handgun but the option's still there nevertheless. Although the C96 was branded as a Mauser weapon, the gun wasn't designed by Paul Mauser, who originally didn't even really like it. The pistol was actually created by the Free Federal Brothers in the late 1800s, who were working with Mauser at the time but decided to develop their very own self-loading pistol by themselves, leading to the creation of the Construction 96. As the pistol entered its prototype stages, Paul Mauser decided to get behind the Federal Brothers' new creation in a bid to compete with the growing trend of semi-automatic handguns on the market, including Borchardt's C93. He lent his name to the gun, adding a bit more prestige to it with the hopes of boosting the C96's sales in the military market. Though despite being a popular weapon among civilians, the gun was initially rejected by the German army. However, several other countries did take interest in the weapon, including the Russian and Turkish armies along with the Italian navy. Not long after the Great War began, the German army were in short supply of small arms and needed something else to make up the numbers, alongside the standard issue Luger P08. So with that, a deal was made with Mauser and 150,000 C96 pistols were contracted for use with the Imperial German army. These special Red 9 variants were chambered in the 9mm Parabellum cartridge, the standard pistol cartridge used by the German military and were also marked with the number 9 engraved into the wooden handle, which would help to remind the user to load the pistol with the correct 9mm ammunition. Over the course of 41 years, approximately 1 million C96 pistols in a number of different variations were produced for governments and armies across the globe. The gun saw action in many conflicts and battles up until the end of the Second World War, and although it might not have been the weapon of choice in its home country, the unique looking semi-automatic handgun still went down in history anyway for its popularity and exotic design. So in Battlefield 1, the C96 pistol boasts a decent amount of close and long range damage, with a maximum of 28 up to the range of 15 meters and a minimum damage of 15 beyond 33 meters. It might not be as strong as the revolvers or the Mars Automatic and the M1911 is going to have the advantage in those close range firefights, but the C96 is still going to be able to take down an opponent in 7 rounds at longer ranges and 4 bullets in CQC, putting it on par with quite a few of the other semi-automatic pistols, as despite having a slightly lower maximum damage and a slightly higher minimum damage, it's generally going to translate over to the same amount of bullets to kill as the P08 and the repeater pistol M1912. However, with both of those guns having a slightly higher maximum damage output, two rounds to the head is all it's going to take to bring down your opponent, whereas the C96 will require three headshots or one headshot and two body shots to take an enemy out of the fight in those closer proximities. When it comes to fire rate, the C96 isn't exactly the quickest of the pack. It fires at a speed of 300 RPM, which is identical to both the M1911 and the P08. 
It might be all of the revolvers outright, but otherwise it sits amongst the slowest fire in semi-automatic pistols, which generally gives it a fairly slow time to kill in close quarters, down to its moderate damage model. Because the C96 fired the highest velocity pistol cartridge for its time, muzzle velocity is going to be greatly improved over most of the other secondary weapons, with each bullet reaching the speed of 440 meters per second as it whizzes through the air. Because of this, each round is going to reach its destination fairly quickly without much need to compensate for travel time, and so it might seem a bit more reliable to use at further distances because of this. With the C96 having a deploy time of 0.5 seconds, you won't be able to draw it out quite as quickly as the ME1903, though it'll still be a better option than the Auto Revolver and the M1911, which the Medic class can also equip as secondary weapons. As far as the recoil pattern goes, the C96 has a fairly standard set of figures. It's going to kick upwards with a value of 1.5, and horizontally with left and right values of 0.35. This puts it somewhere in the middle, generally making it a more accurate version of the P08. It's going to jolt upwards a tiny bit more than most of the other semi-auto pistols, but it's still going to have more stability than the M1911 and the Mars Automatic, along with the revolvers. The C96 is also pretty close to the middle when it comes to accuracy too. Its horizontal recoil figure is going to make it a bit more precise than the likes of the Tashman pistol, P08 and M1911, though it's not quite as accurate as some of the others. The C96 does however have a fairly high amount of ADS spread when moving, so it might be best to keep this into account when running and gunning, as standing still will quite often give you a tactical advantage if you want to remain on target easier. Hit fire is the same across the board with all secondary weapons, so it can often be a good idea to shoot from the hip in close quarter battles, especially if you need to move and strafe around to avoid incoming fire from an up close opponent, bypassing the time it takes to aim down sights and acquire your target. Being able to hold up to 10 rounds at a time means that running out of ammunition in a heated gunfight will usually become less of a problem than it would be with other secondary weapons. It's got the second highest ammo capacity of the handguns, closely following the Mars Automatic, which, unlike the C96, can store an extra bullet in the chamber when performing a tactical reload, bumping its ammo capacity up to 11 rounds in total. Because the C96 utilises stripper clips, you're going to be able to reload much faster when the gun is running on empty. It'll take 2.7 seconds to throw in a new clip holding 10 fresh bullets, which is the same length of time to reload the ME 1903. A tactical reload is usually the quicker solution with most weapons, but not in the C96's case, as it's generally going to take longer to perform, taking between 1.8 to 3.8 seconds, depending on how many rounds you need to push back into the magazine. So if your gun's running fairly low on ammo, then I'd advise seeking out some cover first before replenishing with individual bullets, if you can, as this will make you a less vulnerable target and allow you to safely get back into the fight unscathed. So in conclusion, the C96 doesn't exactly pack the biggest punch, and it's also not going to be able to outshoot a fair few of the other semi-auto handguns. But what it lacks in speed and close range power, it makes up for in its ability to bear more ammunition than almost all of the other sidearms allowing a bit more leeway for taking on several opponents one after the other. Because the gun's damage over range isn't stunted too badly, and with it having the second highest muzzle velocity of all the pistols, just behind the Mars Auto, means that the C96 can perform slightly better than most secondary weapons over distance, making it a fairly good gun to draw out to finish off a weakened target further away. Despite having a larger than average ammo capacity, it's still always best to be aware of how many bullets you have left in the gun thinking tactically to survive those long reload times which might otherwise catch you off guard. Weapon accuracy shouldn't be too much of a problem, though movement with the pistol can hinder its effectiveness for aimed fire a bit more than usual, making enemies a bit trickier to hit in the process. Standing still can be a good way to counter this issue, and hit firing can also be a good alternative for engaging enemy players that are just too close for comfort. But generally, the C96 is a fairly well-rounded weapon in most aspects. It doesn't do anything particularly well to stand out from the crowd, but at the same time, it's still a reliable option to pick, ensuring you've got enough rounds to finish the gunfight. Well, that's just about all I've got for you in this one, guys. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to stay tuned for more Battlefield 1 guides and other stuff in the future, and hit that like button if you enjoyed the video. Take it easy, and I'll see you in the next episode.